sponsorship of uh, Rothschild Bank on his suit like a NASCAR racer because these are the guys who put him in there. And one last thing here, Washington Post, talking about the European Union, they call it a 28-nation club may be making a comeback. You know what? As George Carlin said, it's a club and you ain't in it, folks. You got no say about what's going on in this special club and we need to get out of that club and take our governments back. That's what this election is about, isn't it, Gerald? It is. And, and again, you, you pointed out, too, they use the term centrist. Oh, yeah, what's a centrist? I mean, <laughs> it's so moronic. Call it right wing, left wing, you know, grow up. And when you look, you know what the French people just did? They're putting in their Obama. That's all this guy is. Yes. He's another Obama. Another guy full of crap that knows nothing. Another little boy that lies his way into office. And won't do anything other than keep the status quo going. Another little liar that plays whatever is being played out, capitalizes on it, wins over those people, and then plays the centrist role, which actually means keeping the club, as you mentioned, George Carlin, we're not members in it, never will be, keeping them from rape, keeping them alive so they can rape every dime and life out of us that they can. So that's who they put into office. So now we have to say the French were as stupid as everybody else. And I used to think that they were really smart. But boy, <laughs> by putting it, but look who they had. After, look at the clown that they got there now, Hollande. Yeah. Look at the jerk they had behind him. A little warmonger of a nothing guy, Sarkozy, that took out along with Obama and another little jerk I should say wanker because he's English, Cameron, who also just start, started the war in Libya. So when you look around the world and look what you have, I guess the people are getting what they deserve because they're putting in one little jerk after another. Yes, and of course, uh, when you're talking about Sarkozy and uh, Hollande, who is the first, the, the first French president to not run for re-election, why? One of the reasons is because he angered his socialist base by pandering to the bankers in Brussels. And the guy who enacted those policies was Macron, who Hollande brought into his administration because Rothschild wanted him there. <laughs> Basically, uh, he bought his way out of uh, his government service for 50,000 euros, then uh, spending four years with uh, Rothschild, he becomes extremely wealthy, and then they insert him into a socialist government. So that's why you had this fracturing of the socialist party there. But of course, they also reported how he was partying after the election with Sarkozy and all of his bling bling celebrities, which is what they call them in France. So this is a guy who is equally at home with all of the establishment. That's why they call him a centrist, because they don't want to label him as being with one party or the other. No, he's with the globalists in Brussels. He's with the bankers. He's a central bankerist is what he is. You see now in what they will try to do, but of course they can't do it with this one, is call you, Mr. Knight, a conspiracy theorist. Oh yeah, the fact is this cat is from the Rothschild Club. He has his credentials right there. Here are the papers. Does anybody need any more proof? No, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, I'm not. Here's the proof. Oh, yeah, just because he was with the Rothschilds, that doesn't mean he was with the Rothschilds, just like they got that other slimer over there who's the head of the ECB, Mario Draghi. Yeah, the former head of the Goldman Sachs gangs division over there in Europe, now running the European Central Bank. Hey, let's take a trip to the UK. Who's the central bankster in charge over there? Uh, Carney. Yeah, Carnival Man. Oh, yeah, wasn't he... With Goldman Sachs, too? Hey, look at the clown running Australia. Turnbull, or is it turn BS bull? Yeah, another Goldman Sachs cat, huh? One after another. That's right. It's a banker takeover. Oh, and everybody out there say, oh, Salenti, lower your voice, you're becoming angry. Hey, get this in your head. If Jesus Christ could pick up a whip and drive the money changes out of the temple. Hey, an act of violence, right, by the Prince of Peace to get rid of the banksters that were ruining people's lives? I could be angry about it because I don't like getting shafted by the Wall Street gang and the Glo Goldman Sachs gang 
the Merrill Lynch mob and all of the rest. Oh, and all you liberals out there that are crying your crocodile tears that Hitler he didn't win and Obama's gone, he didn't prosecute one of the criminals that committed felonies, convicted of felonies, the banks, not one head rolled. Oh, just like this little clown that just got elected in France, Obama lied his way into, the, into office, promising we, the little people, that the banksters would pay for their criminal acts and didn't bring one of them to justice. You know what they call bringing people to justice? Killing somebody overseas. I brought Osama bin Laden to justice. I blew his brains out. Oh, I didn't do it. I hired my front men to do it because I couldn't fight my way out of a paper bag. But we'll call it bringing them to justice. That's how distorted it's become. And what you said before, David, about this becoming a neo-colonial society, it's yeah. a neo-feudal society. Yeah. There's different rules for the political nobility and the economic elite. Yeah, well, the economic elite want to eliminate the Western middle class. And so that's exactly what they're doing. You have this oh, guy, are. Macron. We talked about it at the uh, end of February, February 27th. We had an article at Infowars.com, Le Pen's Rothschild rival, who says Muslim mass migration is unstoppable. He said, get used to it. He said, we've entered a world of great migrations, and we will have more of it. We will have more of it because that's what they want. That's what the bankers want. They want to take down the middle class in America and Western Europe. They want to have a clash of cultures. They want to have chaos. They want to have terrorism. So they will be in the catbird seat here. He says, uh, we've entered a world of great migrations. He goes, it's going to be in the coming decades migrations from geopolitical conflicts that, of course, the bankers will set up. Rich man's war, poor man's fight. And they're going to bring the fight home to our shores. That's what they're going to do with this mass migration that is the aftermath of these wars that they want to set up abroad. Yeah, and again, you know, as we talk about bringing in migrants and, and other people coming into the country, the people that support it, here's what I say to them. Open your house to them. Bring them in. Yeah. Pay for their health care. Pay for their education. You want them in? Bring them in. I adopt don't want them. them in. Yeah, adopt them yourself. Be responsible exactly. for them. Yes. Exactly. I don't want to bring in another person into this country until this nation rebuilds itself. Look here. You pick up today's Wall Street Journal. I was just looking at it. We're ready to go on the air. You look at the front page story. Parents are drowning in college loan debt. Over 330,000 in the United States in U.S. programs haven't made a payment in at least a year. Wow. We're suffering in this country economically. Again, only the economic elite are making it to the top. So does not make sense to me to bring in more people when you can't take care of your own. And again, all these people that are shooting off their mouths and taking to the streets in these protests, bring them into your house, put your money where your mouth is, educate them, pay for their health care, feed them. We can't feed our own right now, and you want to bring in more? It doesn't make sense to me. A good example of that is the H-1B visa program. Of course, they say we have to bring in these individuals sometimes, there's a reason to bring in somebody who's a specialist in another field, but that's not the way they're using it. They're using it to replace people in many middle-level uh, positions because they can hire cheaper labor from India or other places, just as we saw at Disney and elsewhere. They told the Americans, you're going to train your replacements who are bringing in here under the H-1B visa program, uh, or you're not going to get any kind of uh, severance pay out of this. So they basically uh, twist their arms doing that. But they're bringing in these people, in many cases, putting out engineers at entry-level positions, people who've gone to college to get a degree. They've gone into debt to get a degree. But also we have illegal aliens who come in here under the DREAMer program. And, Gerald, they get in-state tuition. <laughs> because even though, at any state that they want to go to, I mean, even Americans, they're always put ahead of the line of Americans, even when it comes to something like that. An American, if you, you have to uh, live in that particular state and only in that state can you get an in-state tuition. 
If you're a foreign citizen criminally trespassing in this country, you can go anywhere you want and get at the head of the line. You know, David, I wrote about H-1B visas in my book, Trends 2000, an international bestseller back in 1996. I showed how it was a whole scheme from Silicon Valley to bring in cheap labor so they wouldn't have to pay the people in this country a living wage when they could get away with it. And the whole, the entire push to bring in immigrants and refugees going back was the National Association of Manufacturers, when we had manufacturers in this country, and Silicon Valley. It was a con job by the Silicon con men to bring in cheap labor. That's all of this is about. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we've seen some uh, movement by the uh, Trump administration to curb that. That's one of the things that he had talked about in his campaign, and I'm glad to see him do it. One of the things, too, Gerald, and I wanted to get your take on this, was uh, we saw today that... Um, they announced that the Trump administration is going to look at the abuse uh, that the executive orders that uh, Barack Obama filed to use the Antiquities Act to take massive amounts of land, especially throughout the West. He was calling everything a monument, uh, part of the Antiquities Act, which would have been set up to uh, save some specific artifact of culture. And just like he abused the 1917 Espionage Act, he also abused this ancient uh, uh, piece of legislation to take millions upon millions of acres. And this is something that is uh, a big issue out West. And the Trump administration has now taken the lead saying that they're going to go back and look about 20 years at uh, the abuse of this particular tactic and uh, possibly undo some of these takings of land. Yeah, I don't, I don't know much about that. So I, you know, I'm not going to really comment on mm -hmm. it. I haven't really been following that. But what I, you know, again, there are, on the economic issues, I agree a lot of what Trump is doing. And when you looked at the poll that came out, for example, and his low ratings is 100, you know, the first 100 days. But then you look at what his most popular position on that polling is. 73% of the people support him for his wanting to bring back jobs and create jobs in the United States. That's right, putting America first. Exactly. Yes. So in those issues, I'm, I'm totally for it. On the foreign policy issues, he's done a 180 on it. Yes. He came out and said well, how useless NATO is, which it is, and now he's backtracked on that. And, and the again, UN. And the UN, as he was saying, uh, the UN is, uh, is, is uh, doing an awful job, and yet what do we see? We see him going exactly opposite. You're talking about the Occupy Peace situation. I'm very concerned that he brings in the United Nations Security Council to the White House before he talks to anybody from Congress. And it sounds like the type of thing that we saw going back a few years ago when Jeff Sessions was talking to Leon Panetta. We all remember that clip. And Jeff Sessions is saying, well, you know, what would you do? And Jeff uh, and Leon Panetta says, well, we might notify you after the fact, but we're going to make the decision with the U.N. and with NATO, and we might advise Congress after the fact. And Jeff Sessions says, wait a minute, you're a congressman, you know what the Constitution says. Congress is supposed to declare law, uh, the, uh, the war according to the law, and uh, they have this back and forth. But now it looks like that's what's going on with uh, North Korea. We'll have to wait and see, but it certainly is troubling for me to see the order in which uh, this is happening. First the U.N., then the Senate, then the House is going to be advised by the White House. And again, you look at who he's stacked the administration with. Yes. Loaded with defense contractors and generals. I want to read you a quote. This is the guy, our U.S. Defense Secretary, Mattis, Mad Dog. Quote, you go into Afghanistan, you got guys who slap women around for five years because they don't wear a veil. Guys like that ain't got no manhood anyway. It's a hell of a lot of fun to shoot them. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is coming from an adult. Here's another mm -hmm. one from him. I'm going to plead with you, do not cross us. If you do, survivors will write about what we do here for 10,000 years. He's talking about the U.S. occupation of Afghanistan. What are we doing over there? It was a war. I broke up George Bush's speech to the American people in one of our Trends Journal nine days after 9-11. I wrote, this is how I began it. 
Only a madman would speak these words, and only people dumbstruck with fear would believe them and believe they did. There was no proof of anything that we should have gone into Afghanistan. There's a man by the name of Osama bin Laden, and he'd been hiding there. Yes, so? Well, we're going to go over there, and we're going to get rid of those Taliban. Oh, the Taliban. Hey, isn't that what Jimmy Carter created to get the Russians out of there? Oh, no, it's the Mujahideen, too. Oh, that's the one Osama bin Laden was part of. I mean, everybody forgets these things. Well, of course, they've got a lot of lithium, Gerald. Uh, they got a lot of lithium that they use for batteries. They, uh, is the, uh, they're the lithium. Uh, they are to lithium what Saudi Arabia is to oil. That's one of the reasons that we're there. Of course, they also have massive production of poppies for the opiates, and that has skyrocketed since we've gone back there. So we've got real reasons for being there, don't we, Gerald? <laughs> Well, no, the reason they invaded Libya that, and, and Iraq was because of their broccoli crops. It wasn't because they were sitting on <laughs> in, uh, Libya, the, the finest sweet crude on the planet that only cost a dollar to get out of the ground mm -hmm. and the 10th largest reser oil reserves. And what does Iraq have? The second or third largest oil reserves. You know, mm -hmm. it had nothing to do with that, of course. And, it, it and Syria doesn't have anything to do with the pipelines that are competing no, uh, to come across. No, it, it has nothing to do with any of that. It has to do with freedom and democracy. <laughs> All right, we're going to sponsorship of uh, Rothschild Bank on his suit like a NASCAR racer because these are the guys who put him in there. And one last thing here, Washington Post, talking about the European Union, they call it a 28-nation club may be making a comeback. You know what? As George Carlin said, it's a club, and you ain't in it, folks. You got no say about what's going on in this special club, and we need to get out of that club and take our governments back. That's what this election is about, isn't it, Gerald? It is, and and again, you you pointed out too. They use the term centrist. Oh yeah, what's a centrist? I mean, <laughs> it's so moronic. Call it right wing, left wing. You know, grow up. And when you look, you know what the French people just did? They're putting in their Obama. That's all this guy is. Yes. He's another Obama, another guy full of crap that knows nothing, another little boy that lies his way into office and won't do anything other than keep the status quo going, another little liar that plays whatever is being played out, capitalizes on it, wins over those people, and then plays the centrist role, which actually means keeping the club as you mentioned, George Carlin, we're not members in it, never will be, keeping them from rape, keeping them alive so they can rape every dime and life out of us that they can. So that's who they put into office. So now we have to say the French were as stupid as everybody else. And I used to think that they were really smart. But boy, <laughs> by putting it, but look who they had. Look at the clown that they got there now, Holland. Yeah. Look at the jerk they had behind him. A little warmonger of a nothing guy, Sarkozy, that took out along with Obama and another little jerk, I should say wanker because he's English, Cameron, who also start, started the war in Libya. So when you look around the world and look what you have, I guess the people are getting what they deserve because they're putting in one little jerk after another. Yes, and of course, uh, when you're talking about Sarkozy and uh, Hollande, who is the first, the, the first French president to not run for re-election, why? One of the reasons is because he angered his socialist base by pandering to the bankers in Brussels. And the guy who enacted those policies was Macron, who Hollande brought into his administration because Rothschild wanted him there. <laughs> Basically, uh, he bought his way out of uh, his government service for 50,000 euros. Then uh, spending four years with uh, Rothschild, he becomes extremely wealthy. And then they insert him into a socialist government. So that's why you had this fracturing of the Socialist Party there. But, of course, they also reported how he was partying after the election with Sarkozy and all of his bling-bling celebrities, which is what they call them in France. So this is a guy who is equally at home with all of the establishment. That's why they call him a centrist. Changes out of the temple. Hey, an act of violence, right, by the Prince of Peace to get rid of the banksters that were ruining people's lives? I could be angry about it because I don't like getting shafted by the Wall Street gang 
and the Glo Goldman Sachs gang, the Merrill Lynch mob, and all of the rest. Oh, and all you liberals out there that are crying your crocodile tears that Hitler didn't win and Obama's gone, he didn't prosecute one of the criminals that committed felonies, convicted of felonies, the banks, not one head rolled. Oh, just like this little clown that just got elected in France, Obama lied his way into, the, into office, promising we, the little people, that the banksters would pay for their criminal acts and didn't bring one of them to justice. You know what they call bringing people to justice? Killing somebody overseas. I brought Osama bin Laden to justice. I blew his brains out. Oh, I didn't do it. I hired my front men to do it because I couldn't fight my way out of a paper bag. But we'll call it bringing them to justice. That's how distorted it's become. And what you said before, David, about this becoming a neo-colonial society, it's yeah. a neo-feudal society. Yeah. There's different rules for the political nobility and the economic elite. Yeah, well, the economic elite want to eliminate the Western middle class. And so that's exactly what they're doing. You have this oh, guy, Macron. We talked about it at the uh, end of February. February 27th, we had an article at Infowars.com. Le Pen's Rothschild rival who says Muslim mass migration is unstoppable. He said, get used to it. He said, get we've entered a world of great migrations and we will have more of it. We will have more of it because that's what they want. That's what the bankers want. They want to take down the middle class in America and Western Europe. They want to have a clash of cultures. They want to have chaos. They want to have terrorism. So they will be in the catbird seat here. He says, uh, we've entered a world of great migrations. He goes, it's going to be in the coming decades, migrations from geopolitical conflicts that, of course, the bankers will set up. Rich man's war, poor man's fight. And they're going to bring the fight home to our shores. That's what they're going to do with this mass migration that is the aftermath of these wars that they want to set up abroad. Yeah, and again, you know, as we talk about bringing in migrants and, and other people coming into the country and the people that support it, here's what I say to them. Open your house to them. Bring them in. Yeah. Pay for their health care. Pay for their education. You want them in? Bring them in. I adopt don't want them. them in. Yeah, adopt them yourself. Be responsible yeah, exactly. for them. Yes. Exactly. I don't want to bring in another person into this country until this nation rebuilds itself Just because they and don't want to label him as being with one party or the other no he's with the globalists in brussels he's with the bankers he's a central bankerist is what he is you see now in what they will try to do but of course they can't do it with this one is call you mr knight a conspiracy theorist oh yeah the fact is this cat is from the rothschild club he has his credentials right there here are the papers. Does anybody need any more proof? No, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, I'm not. Here's the proof. Oh, yeah, just because he was with the Rothschilds, that doesn't mean he was with the Rothschilds. Just like they got that other slimer over there who's the head of the ECB, Mario Draghi. Yeah, the former head of the Goldman Sachs gangs division over there in Europe, now running the European Central Bank. Hey, let's take a trip to the UK. Who's the central bankster in charge over there? Uh, Carney. Yeah, Carnival Man. Oh, yeah, wasn't he with Goldman Sachs, too? Hey, look at the clown running Australia. Turnbull. Or is it turn BS bull? Yeah, another Goldman Sachs cat, huh? One after another. That's right. It's a banker takeover. Oh, and everybody out there say, oh, Salenti, lower your voice. You're becoming angry. Hey, get this in your head. If Jesus Christ could pick up a whip and drive the money